Welcome to my latest YouTube video. Today I am going to share with you a technique that I developed today actually on how to neutralize a post-traumatic stress disorder related reaction to a narcissistic abuser. In other words, I'm going to show you how to neutralize PTSD that's related to a gaslighting narcissist who has systematically manipulated you, tried to change your mental health, tried to change your physical health, tried to create a trap within which you were placed so that you could never get out of, but always think you deserve to be in. Before I tell you about this technique, let me give you the backstory. Today, during a session with um, a woman who I will call Susan, and of course that's not her real name, um, we were talking about how every morning she wakes up and she is flooded with anxiety, stress, um, body pains, nausea, and, and I asked her, I said, where is this coming from? And she didn't know. But she said it had to be uh, because of her upcoming divorce with her pathological narcissist gaslighting future ex-husband. She said that he had taken a videotape of her during which she was screaming and yelling and he not only tried to convince her that this is evidence of you having borderline personality disorder, a mental health disorder, but evidence that you are the sick person and the bad person, and that is why um, I, the gaslighter, needed to take care of you. Although it has been two years since he took these two videos of her um, being angry, the impact of him having what he called evidence of her insanity, um, it kept her feeling controlled and trapped. So, but just let me be clear, gaslighters um, are pathological narcissists who have sociopathic traits, um, that they are able to plan out the strategy to weaken, disempower, marginalize their victim and get their victim to believe that there is something wrong with them that either never really existed or um, did exist, but in mild to moderate proportion. So this gaslighting, soon to be ex-husband, he planned the event for which she would eventually be antagonized enough to start screaming and lose psychological control. Uh, and knowing that he would be able to elicit or antagonize this response, he uh, videotaped it on his camera. This was not only purposefully planned, systematically set up, but it was part of the nefarious, um, um, some might say evil, but uh, not in a religious sense, um, evil doings of a gaslighter who wants to create more and more fake evidence, analogous to fake news, but fake evidence that he can present to his victim, SLD or codependent, to prove that she is actually as sick as he has made her to believe. So many of you who have experienced um, gaslighting and who have experienced um, this type of fake evidence um, know exactly what the gaslighter does in order to make you behave like this broken, mentally disordered, weak, and incapacitated person. They know exactly how to either set up a situation in which you fail or set up a situation that was doctored or manipulated um, for you to fail. More than that, they're able to um, manipulate the environment in a way that makes you believe that you're the bad one, the sick one, and they are the beneficent, helpful um, 
caretaker who just wants to help you with this um, mental illness that, that they have gaslit you into believing. So in going back to my client, Susan, in these two instances, um, her gaslighting, soon to be ex-husband, antagonized her about her lack of uh, self-worth, her failure as a wife, her failure as um, a sister, um, because there was some issues going on with her and her sister, and her sister was mad at her. Um, and, And more than that, he then started to remind her that in his compassionate way that he was there to protect her because she obviously could not protect herself. And in this discussion, he started to remind her how uh, inept she has been as a wife and inept she has been um, as a sister. And he started to give her what he called evidence, proving to her that, that she was mentally ill. And he had implanted the idea that she had borderline personality disorder years into this relationship. And she had been in this relationship with this man for five years. And every time that um, she would get angry, it usually was because he instigated her. He pushed her. Um, He set up the environment for her to be extremely upset and then react naturally with anger. Because of his gaslighting sociopathic traits, he was able to push her even further to the point of rage. And then when she would lose it, um, and lose control of her anger and, and uh, fall victim to her rage, um, he would then remind her, this is what I mean. You have severe psychological problems. You have borderline personality disorder, and this is why people don't like you, and this is why you're lucky to have a husband like, like, like me um, um, to protect you. And over the years of this gaslighting, she identified with having borderline personality disorder and every time she would want something from him that he wouldn't give her or um, she would be mad at him for something he did bad like he drank too much or he was flirting with other women and he would try to manipulate the conversation to make her feel like this is really her fault naturally any person who is in that kind of double bind is going to get angry just think about it. If, if you are observing the wrongdoing of another person who not only denies that they're doing it, but insinuates that your perceptions are wrong, and this is really about your insecurity, your, your lack of intelligence, your lack of awareness, um, and this mental illness that um, you have been inculcated to believe, you then are a victim of the double bind. And the double bind is you can't win for losing. The double bind is crazy making. That's when you are told that you have a problem and you try to defend yourself and to say you don't. And then in the way that you defend yourself, you start to get upset. And then the, the gaslighter says, well, there you go. This is what I mean. Here's your problem. And you get more upset. And then you lose your temper. And then the gaslighter goes, there you go. What more evidence could I ask for? That double bind is the bane of any guest lit victim. So in this session with my client, Susan, she um, told me that she can barely function because you know she's getting ready to um, go to um, divorce court to divorce um, her husband. And she knows and believes he is going to use those two video, he, two videotapes he took of her in her rage against her. And that double bind that she wasn't in her marriage where nothing she could do to convince um, her gaslighter that she you know, didn't have a problem and eventually she was, it was proven to her that she actually had the problem that she really believed she didn't have. That double bind like most other SLD gaslit victims, um, goes deeper than they can remember. That double bind actually is a double bind of their childhood. And in my book, The Human Magnet Syndrome, I talk about um, adults who are in uh, relationships with pathological narcissists who have been gaslit um, often 
if not invariably, um, had that same type of gaslighting experience as a child with their narcissistic parent. So, but the reason I bring that up is that double bind is so deep, uh, deeply implanted because of the gaslighting that it goes beyond our conscious awareness. And it also representing post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD, there are elements of it you're not conscious of and that are manifest through um, physical symptoms, mental health symptoms, and all she knew is that she would wake up, you know, feeling nauseous, sweaty, um, headachey, like, like I said before. And then I asked her, I said, you know, where do you think these physical symptoms are coming from? And uh, her first response was she didn't know. And because I had been working with her a while, um, I suggested that it was the, the court case that um, she was getting ready to um, um, go to, the, the court hearing, uh, the court appearance she was getting ready to go to for the divorce. And, and her fear and preoccupation that these videos would be played and everyone would believe that she was insane. She had borderline personality disorder. And so in that moment, <clears throat> I isolated um, the unconscious reaction to the trauma, the PTSD, and that is her feeling, her dread, her anxiety, her angst over the double bind, that no matter what she could do to prove herself innocent, that um, in the process of that, she would actually prove herself to not be innocent. She would prove herself to be the broken one, the mentally ill one, the one with borderline personality disorder, and that the upcoming court date was terrifying her so much that she couldn't really um, deal with it consciously, so it was coming out in physical symptoms. And um, she completely agreed to it, agreed with my analysis. And then I came up with this technique, and that is um, where I asked her to imagine a recent, and she being a scientist, a very talented and brilliant scientist, I asked her to imagine a research study of, of, two, um, of two groups. Of course, not a typical research study. As we know, there's usually three groups. Um, but this one has two groups. Um, each of the group watches the video, the, the, the video that she is terrified of, um, one of the videos, in which she believes proves that she has borderline personality disorder. The first group watches it, but they, they, they read this narrative about um, her childhood, about how she was gaslit as a child. In this narrative, in the story, it talks about how she... Um, married this man who systematically manipulated her into believing that she had borderline personality disorder and gaslit the crap out of her. And, and the narrative um, goes on to say because of getting help from a therapist, um, she learned that she was a victim of gaslighting and narcissistic abuse and was divorcing him in an effort to try to win um, in this divorce proceeding. He found the two videos that he was going to use to prove that she was crazy. So, and the other group would get no explanation. And I asked her, my client Susan, I said, I want you to, in your mind's eye, and this is the part that I want you listeners to do yourself, in your mind's eye, I want you to imagine um, this same scenario your greatest fear about what's wrong with yourself that you have been in, that has been inculcated into your conscious mind has been gaslit into you what is your greatest fear of what's wrong with you that um, you believe or someone has told you that has been gaslit and i i want you to imagine someone um, is going to watch a video of th this part of you that demonstrates you're mentally incapacitated. And I want you to watch the person who received the explanation uh, about what happened to you in your background is to watch her watch the video. And it's very important that you pay attention to this person and let's call her Melissa. 
and Melissa is a volunteer for the research, and Melissa is watching the video of you acting agitated, upset, depressed, crazy. And then I want you to, in this visualization, is to watch Melissa's face. Look at her eyes. What's going on in her eyes? Look at her body posture. And imagine what Melissa is thinking. And what will happen is you will imagine that Melissa is horrified that this woman who is screaming um, on this video, obviously she's upset and she is angry and she is agitated. She's not watching a video of a screaming crazy woman, but she's watching a video of a poor, um, sad, gaslighting victim who has been antagonized and manipulated in order to act in a way that is so uncomfortable and so upsetting. So then, in this visualization, you're going to see that Melissa is upset. You're going to see that Melissa is horrified. You're going to see that Melissa's eyes well up with tears. And if you could get into Melissa's mind, you're going to hear Melissa say, oh my gosh, this poor woman, I wish I could hug her. And I want you to remember this exercise and make your own video, your own mental videotape of it, is I want you to watch another person bear witness to the evidence, in this case the video, that the narcissist created to prove that you are mentally incapacitated, mentally ill, broken, too much of this or too little bit of this. And I want you to watch that person who is well informed about the background and the backstory. And I want you to be, remind yourself of the horror and the, that she experienced at what happened to you. She did not witness what you were doing. She was not witnessing what was wrong with you. But she is, was witnessing what happened to you and how your mental health was twisted so badly that you fell victim to the narcissistic abuse that was recorded in a way, whether in this case a video or some type of evidence. And then I want you to imagine in this visualization that someone asked Melissa, after watching the video is, so what are your thoughts about that? What are your thoughts about what you just saw? And, and Melissa is going to say um, how badly she felt for this woman and how much empathy she had. So what's going to happen in this exercise is you're going to see someone with incredible sympathy for your victimization who is going to see what you thought was proof of what's wrong with you, proof of how crazy you are, proof of your incapacity or you being too tall, too short, too skinny, too overweight, too smart, not smart enough, too anxious, too depressed, who's going to actually see what has been inculcated in your mind to be you being broken is to see that you being a victim, and she's going to have so much compassion and empathy. And that is what I want you, the viewer, to remember. Because, and I should say, in this experiment, and I, <laughs> I should have said this, and I, I, I apologize, there, there's the other group who's going to watch the video, um, this video of you losing your temper, screaming, and being enraged, and they're not going to get any backstory. And then they're going to ask, what did they see? And they're going to say, wow, this person looks like they have anger problems and rage problems and probably has borderline personality disorder. And assuming this was a major psychological study, and there was 100 people uh, like Melissa and 100 people uh, that had the backstory um, and 100 people that did it, um, I promise you that... Um, that it would be statistically significant that the people that had the backstory would have 
so much empathy. And the people that didn't would, would um, conclude with your gaslit narrative of yourself that you, there was something wrong with you. So in conclusion, um, I want you to use this technique where you imagine someone watching the videotape of your mental illness, your problems that were gas, you were gaslit into believing, watching you in a double bind, unable to prove that you're healthy, and then falling apart in the middle of it. And I want you to always remind yourself of this video. I want you to take a snapshot of the person's face watching this video, and we'll call her Melissa. And I want you to emblazon that, that, that image of Melissa's horror, because what you need is a reminder that what happened to you was orchestrated by a malignant, deceptive, sociopathic person who was able to turn you against yourself, create the double bind, and get you to prove to yourself that you are broken in a way that you never were. And by remembering this, we'll call it a technique, but by remembering um, Melissa watching the video and having the backstory and seeing her compassion and empathy, you will be able to empathize with yourself. Because if a stranger can watch this proof that you're crazy and then realize that you never were crazy but were gaslit and have empathy, it will help you do the same for yourself. It will help you love yourself. It will help you have empathy for yourself. It will help you hug that little girl who was wounded that young woman who was wounded, um, that woman was wounded. And by the way, you all should know this by now. <laughs> I talk about women um, as SLDs, and I talk about men as narcissists. The gender goes both ways, and it always goes both ways. So no comments about why I always choose women uh, for the, the, the victims and men for the perpetrators. So in conclusion, if you are a victim of gaslighting and you have been manip systematically manipulated to believe that you are, um, there's something about you that is fundamentally broken and that, you, that never was, and you come to the point of your life where you are starting to understand that your beliefs about yourself were never yours and you were in the process of healing and moving beyond self-love deficit disorder or codependency towards its cure, the codependency cure or self-love abundance, it's, it's crucial for you to look at yourself from another vantage point outside of your gaslit thoughts, a vantage point of a person that knows the whole story and then to experience their empathy. Because then, I believe, will you be able to empathize with yourself enough where you can rebuild your self-love deficiency into self-love abundance. So I hope this um, video helped you. And I know that if you are a victim of gaslighting and you have fallen prey to the, the personality that was never you, it's time to abandon that and look for the truth and seek the healing that you so desperately need. Good luck and be well.